So after any warning, a guy came along, an old man with a great coat and uh, some shoes made out of motor car tires, and he was uh, bringing a small pot with some rice and, uh, and some chicken's eggs. And he said, uh, uh, this is to, to, to welcome you to this country. He said, I am the chief of this area. I'm the keeper of, these, of the spirits here, the lion man spirit and the, uh, the ancestral spirits. And he said, this place is called Tenganengi. And uh, Tenganengi means two hills. So we'd like you to call this area Tenganengi. So I said, we'd, we'd call it this place Tenganengi. And he said, also, he said, in, in the rainy season, before, if there's no rain, you should send us a black cloth which we'll offer to the ancestral spirits, and that will help to bring the rain. So sure enough, every year we used to, when there was no rain, we used to send that. Sometimes the rain bird was singing, and the rain would start coming down. I'm not saying that I'm a rainmaker, but uh, I never like to say it really was or it really wasn't. There are many things that I don't know. I used to think I knew everything, but I don't know. This is Africa. When the old chief died, we, we brewed some, some beer, uh, 900 litres of beer, and we killed, we killed a bull. And the people were dancing, and uh, many people came here. We had 600 people here dancing for the chief's uh, remembrance. And during that, that time, the lightning came and split a big tree, and then afterwards, the people, people said, th this might be an, ext an extraordinary statement, but the People said, the spirit of Chief Chumbureri will come and help you. That's for those who he on his deathbed, he said that I will help Tom and I will be near Tom. So if you need anything, come to Tom. That was like an obligation uh, that when we started Tenganengi, I feel it was a, a fulfillment of my obligation to, to the chief. When I was about 15 years old, there was a Lebanese guy, and this Lebanese guy had, had a set of drums, and he was selling these drums. So I took all my life savings and I bought the drums. And then he introduced me to his drum teacher. His drum teacher was called Gerber. So then Gerber, we sat on Gerber's lawn, and he was saying, now, this is the foot for playing the, the big drum, and this is the play for the cymbal, and you must play one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's it. Yeah. One, just keep the beat. Keep the beat. Okay, so I kept the beat. Then later on, he. That's w w one beat the bar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two beats the bar. One, two, three, four. Four beats the bar. One, two, three, four. Eight beats the bar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, twelve beats the bar. Four. One, two, three, four. Now, 16 beats to the bar. Two, three, four, one, two, three, one.
when I first came to Zimbabwe, by that time I was 20, 20 years old, I was reaping the tobacco in the tobacco fields with young Malawi girls, all speaking the, the work language. It's a, it's a beautiful language. The words sort of uh, are kind of individual. They don't, it's not such. So, uh, whereas the Shona says, You see, it's a different thing, but the, the, the chair would say, You see, a different thing, but the chair would say, is up in the alarm, the bicycle, radio, uh, blanket, machine bed, everything, uh, dress, one cards one guy. I used to go and see the guys dancing at, at night. And the, the people would all get together and they'd be dancing and then they'd, they'd sing songs like Akazi Kunyenga, Akazi Kunyenga, Wanyenga Zintambili Bambu Gwagwa, Baya Ningombi, Sio Bambu Sagulile, Akazi Kunyenga. That means we're going to Kenya. We don't know if we're going to die. And in Kenya, the woman may cheat you. They cheated uh, a chap called uh, Tambili. His father's name was uh, Bambu, his father, Gwagwa. His name was Gwagwa. And I kill an ox that I'm telling the truth. By any Ngombi. So, um, and, and then also there seemed to, there seemed to be a, a very, very different way of, of look, looking at, at, at situations and a different kind of a humour. Sometimes it was just a few words or just a, a gesture and everybody would roar with laughter. Very good, thank you, very good. Come on, you guys. Come on, you guys. John Bluefoot. Yeah, guys. Come on, Andy, Andy. Chova, Chova. Andy, wait. Chova, Chova, Chova. This is a good guy. <laughs> We'd had such a nice, a nice time in the bush, but really in my own heart of hearts I had this kind of creative vision and a real desire that I wanted to get married because I was 23 years old and I felt that I wanted, a wo I wanted to be with a woman and as a partner and, you know, as a wife and to have children. And then one day, the lady appeared, so beautiful. She had a green, blue-green dungarees on and she had blonde hair and a lovely English complexion, you know, peaches and cream like Holland or Europe. And my heart was just going like that and I couldn't concentrate or think for a day or so. And then I had the opportunity to go to a, a gym corner where they had all the horses and uh, the, the people, people were, were all English colonels and ex-Air Force commanders and uh, rich farmers' sons and some aristocrats, Lord so-and-so and so somebody and a very, very, uh, a very, very um, powerful social order was going on there and uh, they said, oh, come on James, Get that horse out of the wagon, and then um, and, uh, uh, Cyrus, uh, put the saddle on that grey mare there uh, with, the, with the snaffle and the bridle and uh, a martingale. Um, and uh, look out, Leo, get that bloody horse out of the wagon.